Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Kishore Kumar. I am working as a consultant nephrologist and kidney transplant physician at Pace Hospitals, High Tech City. Today, I will be discussing about kidney problems which can occur uh, in people who go to gym. So, before uh, discussing about this topic, I want to uh, give a brief information about how our kidneys work. So, we have two kidneys in our body. Uh, each kidney has 10 lakh small units which are called as nephrons. These are the functioning units of the kidney. Uh, in these units, the blood will come and it will get filtered and urine is formed. If we take a nephron, it has two parts. One is a glomerulus which is a globular round structure and there is a tubule which is connected to that uh, glomerulus. So, first the blood will come to that glomerulus through a small artery which is a tube and it will go away through a small vein that is also a small tube. So, once inside the glomerulus, the blood is filtered and the filtered blood leads to formation of urine and that urine is uh, passed into the uh, tubule and from that tubule the urine is uh, uh, the urine travels through the ureter it will come to the bladder and from there it will go out so this is the normal routine functioning of the kidney usually people who go to gym take many supplements like they take whey protein supplements or they take creatine supplements or they take some steroids or uh, they can take some vitamin injections. So, I will be discussing about the risks in relation to kidney with these supplements. First, we will discuss about the whey protein supplements. So, normally what is whey? So, uh, I will discuss about how this whey protein is made. So, if you take cow milk out of 100 ml, 3.4 grams of protein is there in the cow milk. Out of this 3.4 grams protein, 80% is insoluble protein which is called as casein and 20% is soluble protein which is called as whey. So, the, the milk which is taken from cow, there is one enzyme which is added to that milk. After the addition of this enzyme, the solub insoluble and the soluble proteins get separated. So, the insoluble protein will form coagulum, coagulum and this from this coagulum the cheese is made. The soluble the remnant which is the liquid whey uh, in that liquid whey there is a whey protein along with that there is some bacteria and also fat. So, this all bacteria and fat is removed via membrane filtration and after that the liquid which is remaining is dried and after that from that dried liquid the protein is made that is the whey protein. So, if we take the whey protein, whey protein is also of different types, whey protein isolate, whey protein concentrate, whey protein hydrolyzed whey protein. In these varieties of whey protein, the protein composition is different. Sometimes the protein composition can be 95 to 99 percent in one type and in the other forms it can be little lesser and the other additional components of the protein will be different among these different types of products. So, how much protein is required for a normal person? If we take a normal person, around 0.8 to 1 gram per kg per day is required. So, for example, in a 60 kilos person, around 50 to 60 grams of protein is required per day. The protein can be animal protein or wedge protein or any sort, any type of protein per day, it is 0.8 to 1 gram per kg per day. This is the normal protein intake. But if we take more than 1.2 gram per kg per day, that is called as high protein intake. So, people who go to gym, they are given this whey protein supplements or they are advised to take more amount of protein in other forms also and they end up taking high protein diet. So, with high protein diet, what, what is the benefit? So, it is proven beyond doubt that whey protein supplements improve muscle strength, improve the recovery from exercise and it will also lead to increased performance. What can happen inside the kidney if we take this whey protein or high protein diet? So, what will happen is if we take protein, protein has to be metabolized or broken down in the body to be used. So, after in, inside the body, the protein after it, it gets broken down into amino acids, 
the waste uh, and once it is metabolized in the body nitrogenous waste products are formed urea is one of the nitrogenous waste products out of many nitrogenous waste products all these waste products have to be eliminated from the body via kidneys so whenever we take high protein diet there is increased blood supply into the kidney especially into the glomerulus the tube which i have already mentioned the artery will get dilated and more amount of will, blood will come into the glomerulus so if there is more blood inside the glomerulus the pressure inside the glomerulus will increase and it will lead to intraglomerular hypertension and increased filtration of the blood this is called as hyperfiltration and along with that high protein intake can also cause increased acid generation in the body increased phosphorus level and it can also cause increased inflammation so you may ask me so you are telling all these side effects so is there any proof of harm in patients who are taking high protein diet are there any studies done yes so there are studies done in these patients with high protein diet or high protein intake especially the gene protein whey protein supplements so i'll be telling about the results so the studies are of two types the studies which are done in normal subjects studies which are done in patients who already have a compromised kidney so compromised kidney can be like single kidney people who have donated their kidney or who are born with one kidney or whose kidney is removed because of some problem like cancer or stone or some other condition or whose kidneys are not well means they are suffering from chronic kidney disease or if they have diabetes leading to kidney damage or if they are losing protein in the urine these are the people who have compromised kidneys so in patients who are healthy subjects like people who have normal kidneys two kidneys and they don't have any other issues in these patients the studies were done especially uh, after whey protein intake these people were observed for around 6 months to 1 year or maximum up to 2 years there are observational studies there are trials also out of uh, in all these studies there is no clear cut harm to kidneys in these patients if they are taken for 6 months or up to 1 year but there is a definite proof that intraglomerular hypertension and hyperfiltration definitely occurs in these patients so the problem with these studies in patients with healthy subjects is that we don't have a follow up of more than 6 months to 1 year it means that what happens to these patients because of that hyperfiltration beyond one year or if they are followed for 4 5 years what happens to them we don't have any information but based on the studies which we have till now there is no clear cut harm in healthy subjects on taking high protein high high amount of whey proteins but if we come to the other group especially in patients who uh, in people who have a compromised kidney or single kidney or whose kidneys are already damaged there is a definite harm the harm in the form of worsening of kidney function or new onset kidney damage because already if a person has a single kidney or a compromised kidney their kidneys are working more if we give them more amount of protein in their diet the kidneys have to work even more and they get damaged early so we avoid high protein intake in patients with a compromised kidney or who have a small kidney or a single kidney or with uh, or they are, if they are born with a single kidney or uh, if a person who has donated his kidney or with a ckd patient or someone losing protein in the urine one more uh, issue with whey protein is there is also a definite proof that whey protein intake increases high increases pressure inside the glomerulus or the kidneys increases filtration but it also increases the calcium excretion in the urine and it will also decrease the ph of the urine it means it makes the urine more acidic so increased calcium excretion in the urine along with less ph of the urine this is a recipe for kidney stone formation so there is a risk of kidney stone with high whey protein intake and people who already suffer from kidney stones whey protein intake high amount of whey protein intake can also increase to uh, can also lead to increased risk of stones so this is about the whey protein supplements in people who go to gym so you have uh, uh, you must have heard about creatinine creatinine is a test which we do to check our kidney function this is a blood test 
so how is this creatinine formed inside the body so we will know about it so creatinine is formed inside the muscle so first what will happen is there are two sources of creatine i am speaking about creatine creatine is converted to creatinine inside the muscle so creatine there are two sources of creatine one is liver or kidney inside the body or from the supplements which we take from outside so creatine which is formed inside the body or which is taken from outside is transferred to the muscle in the body in the muscle that creatine is converted to creatinine phosphate creatine phosphate and it is useful for the functioning of the muscle and gradually this creatine is converted to creatinine and it is excreted outside the body through the kidneys so what is the benefit of this creatine supplements so creatine supplements are usually advised uh, to people to be taken uh, the people who go to gym they take creatine supplements for first 5 days they take 20 grams per day and after that 3 to 5 grams per day is advised to be taken so creatine supplements improves the strength improves the muscle size and also it will improve the performance it is proven that creatine supplements will improve all this but what is the risk of uh, taking these supplements especially in relation to kidneys so there are reports that creatine supplements can lead to allergic reaction inside the kidney which is which we call as allergic interstitial nephritis sometimes the creatine supplements can also cause tubular damage which is called as acute tubular necrosis these are all just case reports or reports it doesn't mean that these side effects happen to every person who take this supplements there are reports of occurrence of these side effects in patients who take creatine supplements so you have to be aware of the symptoms of kidney damage like swelling of the feet sudden weakness decreased urine output all these symptoms if you develop or if the high blood pressure if you have a sudden uh, uh, increase in blood pressure all these suggests that kidney is damaged so whenever you are taking these supplements and if you have any symptoms or new onset symptom it is better to get your kidneys checked steroids the anabolic steroids these are injections uh, which are taken inside the uh, which, are, which are given intramuscularly there are different types of steroids one is like uh, testosterone dihydrotestosterone nandrolone these are all synthetic anabolic steroids they improve the muscle size they also decrease the fat and they will increase the strength but they have lots of side effects like liver related side effects heart related side effects or kidney related side effects if we take the kidneys like creatine supplements they can also cause allergic reactions inside the kidney they can also cause tubular damage and they can also cause scarring inside the kidneys these are the side effects of anabolic steroids so it is better to avoid anabolic steroids if you are going to gym because they are definitely proven to be harmful for kidneys for liver and also for heart vitamin supplements are vitamin a d e are sometimes injected intramuscularly in these people who go to gym the basic vitamin a d e injection is commonly used for animals in uh, to treat their vitamin deficiencies but the oily component of that injection is used in the people who go to gym to increase the size of the muscle basically that oily component of that injection will cause allergic reaction and it will lead to water accumulation in the muscle so that leads to increase in size of the muscle so to bulk up in people who go to uh, gym uh, for body build uh, for body building these injections are given but the problem is along with that oily substance vitamin a and d also along with e is injected this vitamin a and d will cause high calcium levels in the body this high calcium levels have to go out of the body through kidneys so in the kidneys they will lead to kidney stones calcium deposition inside the kidney uh, issue which is called as nephrocalcinosis and it can lead to permanent kidney failure so it is better not to take these vitamin injections also especially uh, which contain vitamin a d and e in high doses now coming to other type of problems which can uh, develop in these patients 
the uh, which is called as uh, i'll be speaking about exertional rhabdomyolysis uh, rhabdomyolysis is a condition where the muscle gets broken down due to excess excess use of the muscles so people who go to gym for the first few days they do uh, exercises or uh, they get strained uh, more than what is required because of which the cell wall of the uh, muscle cells uh, it is broken down and the protein which is present inside the muscle cells will leak into the blood especially the myoglobin which is present inside the muscles uh, will leak into the blood and this protein can damage the kidneys so these people can have sore muscles or sudden onset weakness or red colored urine so if you develop any such symptoms while you are going to gym it is better to come to hospital immediately and get your kidneys checked because it is a treatable condition now one more type of problem which can uh, develop in these patients is hyponatremia so while we do exercises or if we go to marathons or uh, excessive uh, exercise or running uh, we sweat a lot so sweat contains along with water there is more amount of sodium chloride also salt also so body will lose more amount of sodium if you sweat more but to cover up that uh, dehydration we usually sometimes take only plain water so if you take only plain water without electrolytes or without sodium or chloride in it that can lead to less sodium in the blood which is called as hyponatremia so whenever you are excessively sweating or if you are uh, getting dehydrated while you are uh, working out or uh, running it is better to take electrolyte uh, electrolyte water so that you will replenish your electrolytes also inside the blood so this is in short about the problems which can develop in patients who go to gym especially in relation to whey protein intake creatine supplements steroid uh, supplements or vitamin supplements thank you